In the last unit, we mentioned that consensus is an important problem in distributed computing. But consensus, as we will see, is not solvable in some distributed systems model. So we will now discuss what kind of models are there. When we model distributed system, we have to specify timing assumptions on processes, the network, and clocks. Timing assumptions on processes are bounds on the time to make a computation step. And the timing assumptions on network are bounds on the time to transmit a message between the sender and receiver. And when we talk about clocks, we are concerned about local and upper bounds on clock drift rate. So here we assume that each process has a physical clock. We need also to specify failure assumptions. Failure assumptions about processes. So what kind of failure a process can exhibit? Is it crash, crash failure, like a process crashes and stops? Or does the process behave in an arbitrary way? For example, omitting messages or sending messages that are not part of the protocol. And we look to the network, we have to ask ourselves, can the network channel drop messages? And if so, what is the behavior of the channel? Let us look quickly to modeling distributed system. And here is a situation where network failure, where some messages are dropped. And, and here is a situation where we have a process failure. So this process like crashes, it will not receive any messages. And it is out of the system. And we have Byzantine process failure. And Byzantine process failure means that process behave in an arbitrary way. So this means that the process can send messages that are not adhering to the protocol. So we have the timing assumption and process channel failure mode. The when we model a distributed system, so we will start with looking to the weakest form of a distributed system model. Uh, it is called the asynchronous system model. It is the weakest model, and in a sense, the most important model for implementing distributed services over the internet. So what is the asynchronous system model? The asynchronous system model have the following assumptions, or, or actually no assumptions. So it has no bounds on the time the network takes to deliver a message. It has no bounds on how long a computation step in a process can take. And the clocks are not synchronized. So if you send a message from a server in Stockholm to another server in New York, the message might take between, say, 100 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds. But if the network is overloaded, it might take uh, much longer. In fact, in some time, we don't know if it is the network or the server that is down. Uh, this is the basic characteristic of asynchronous systems. And also the clocks. If the process does not have access to a GPS, global positioning system, the clocks of the different processes are totally unsynchronized. In fact, as we will discuss this issue later, you cannot have synchronized clocks in asynchronous distributed systems. Now, given this model, we have the following result. The result is that consensus cannot be solved in asynchronous system if a single node may crash. If we assume that nodes may crash, it is not possible to solve consensus in the asynchronous system model. And this, of course, has implications on atomic broadcast, atomic commit, data election, and many other services over the internet. And basically, you cannot distinguish between a failed process and a slow process or a slow network in an asynchronous system model. So implementation of consensus might in some cases stall violating availability with the implication that I just mentioned. So the opposite extreme of asynchronous system is synchronous systems. In synchronous system, we have quite a lot of knowledge. So in synchronous system, there are known bounds on the time to deliver a message. So the latency 
of the network is known. There are known time on how long a computation step takes on each process. And there are known lower and upper bounds on the physical clock drift rate. So what are examples of these systems, synchronous system? In fact, a typical example of synchronous system is embedded system where you do have control over the whole design of the system and you might have one central clock in the system. And that also uh, systems on chip. And something in between is really multi-core computers. These computers might have multiple cores. Each core has its own processor and clock, but still computation and communication takes a bounded, uh, non-bounded uh, time. So what about consensus in synchronous systems? So the following is known, is that consensus is solvable in synchronous systems even with up to n minus one processes crashing. The basic intuition behind the solution is basically in synchronous systems, we can have an accurate crash detection. Every node, for example, can send a message to every other node. And if no message are received from a specific node within a certain time bound, the node can be assumed crashing. In fact, in the course, we are going to describe an algorithm that given accurate crash detection we can solve the problem of consensus. But we still have another problem, which is that synchronous system is not useful for internet-based distributed services. The question is now, is there is any middle ground between synchronous systems and asynchronous system? If you look carefully to the internet, in some sense, it is mostly synchronous. There are bounds on the transmission from a sender to a receiver, but occasionally internet services violate bounds by condition of the network and failure. So for example, most of the time in a data center, messages may take within the data center uh, less than 10 milliseconds. In less common cases, maybe 100 milliseconds. But sometimes, and that's what I'm saying, sometimes it can take longer. The issue now, how to model this type of system. Another model is so-called partially synchronous system. What is a partially synchronous system? It is a system which initially asynchronous. We, have, we don't know anything about transmission and computation steps and latency in the system. But eventually, the system becomes synchronous, which means it respects some bounds on the communication latency and on the computation steps. So as stated, this model is not realistic. It is not really a realistic model of, of real systems. But most system would have phases where a phase consists of a stable period followed by unstable period. So partially synchronous system talks only about one phase. A phase which starts with an unstable period initially and then moves to a stable period. We will see how to design correct algorithms for these kinds of system. So let us look again to our consensus problem. So consensus is solvable in partially synchronous system. In fact, in partially synchronous system, consensus is solvable with up to, but not including, half of the processes crashing. And if we ask ourselves if this is useful for internet services, and the answer is definitely yes. Another way not to talk about partially synchronous system, but to talk about asynchronous system augmented with what we call a failure detector. So we let each node or a process have a device, local device that we call a failure detector. What is this device locally is doing? It's giving judgment about the crashes of other nodes. And it is implemented by heartbeats and waiting to get responses for its heartbeats.
It might be initially not, but eventually it will be correct. We will understand exactly what we mean by eventually correct in this course. Given an eventually perfect failure detector, consensus and atomic broadcast are solvable with the failure detector I just mentioned. So how we're going to do that? Uh, just attend the rest of the course and you are going to see how this happened. There is still one interesting model that we will discuss actually in part two of the course. And this model is timed asynchronous system. So what do we have here? We have like an asynchronous system, no bounds on, on the time to deliver a message, and no bounds on the time to do a computation step. But physical clocks, clocks associated with each process, have a known clock drift rate. This is actually a realistic model, and we will see that with this model, we can solve some problems more efficiently than in asynchronous systems. What problems we can solve and how, we will show during this course. In summary, distributed systems are everywhere. We will study distributed algorithms, which are the core of distributed systems. We'll study what are the various system models and main service abstractions or problems and how to solve them. Now um, you can have a look at the content of the course. We try to cover the topics and the models with most practical relevance in this course. But of course, there are others which might be interesting. Uh, next, we will just mention some important topics that are not covered in the course.